الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله إمام النووي in his fantastic book كتاب عظيم رياض الصالحين he mentioned about the importance of Qiyam al-Layl and Layl al-Qadr. So I just want to read some of the ahadith in this, these two chapters as quickly as we can and try to gain some benefits as a reminder and to encourage us uh, on these beautiful nights. So as a, a benefit, Sumiyat Salat al-Layl fi Ramadan tarawih li'anna sahaba wa man ba'dihim radiyallahu ta'ala anhu كانوا يطيلون القيام والركوع والسجود فإذا صلوا أربع ركعات أستراه قليلا ثم إذا صلوا أربع أستراه وتكون كل أربع بتسليمتين فسمي ترويح من استراحة بين ركعتين بين بين ركعات وهو عام. so this is beautiful. It was called, it's called Salat al-Layl fi Ramadan a tarawih Why is it called tarawih Tarawih, uh, and this is because the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and the, the Salaf, those who came after them, the, who are the Salaf? The Salaf of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, the Tara'in, meaning like the students of the Sahaba, those people who, who met a Sahabi, and met them as a Muslim and died as a Muslim uh, and uh, that's, that's the main condition for being a tabi. A ta and then there's the itba'a tabi. So these are the three generations. The Prophet ﷺ said, The best people is those people of my generation, then those who follow them, and then those who follow them. Talking about the first three generations. The first three generations are called the Salaf. And the righteous, the good ones amongst them, we call them the Salaf al the righteous predecessors. The righteous predecessors are how many generations? Ten? Three. Barakallahu So the first three generations, the Sahaba, the Tabi'i, the Itba'a Tabi'i. Those are, so all of these three generations, they practice this, this practice of Tarawih, and after them, of course. And basically the Sahaba is that they would make a long qiyam. They would make a long qiyam standing. And uh, they're, you know, going into rukur. And sujood. They would do this very long. And they would pray for rakat and then they would rest. And just like we do, they would pray two rakats and then they will make taslim and then two rakats right after it and then make taslim and that's why you see the imams when they're on the sunnah they rest after four rakats why? because the sahara the Allah and Majmain did this then uh, and so in Arabic istiraha if you go to the istiraha that's the rest house the, the place of rest it says istirahu meaning that they rested and what is this prayer called? Tarawih. Tarawih comes from resting. So this is why it's called Tarawih. And then the author, he said, Allahu Alam. I don't think this is a fayda from Imam Noe, but this is the one who explained this Riyadh Salihim, this, this sharp. The first hadith, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قام رمضان إيمان واحتسابا كفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وتبقى عليه اسم بخاري مسلم Abu Hurairah said, the Prophet said that whoever stands for Ramadan, meaning praying for Ramadan, standing the, you know, in, in prayer, especially in the night, Iman uh, with Iman, believing in the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expecting, having a good thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking and expecting that Allah will reward them, having good husnadhan billah. Uh, Allah will forgive them for all their sins that came before. All their sins that came before. 
that's first standing the this you know, the nail. That if you do it with the uh, by yourself, you're gonna get the same. You're gonna get that reward as women. But as uh, men, it's better for us, the to do it in the jamaah. You know, because the more people, we get more reward. And also in another hadith, وَعَنْهُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَنْهُ قَالَ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَرَبِّبُوا فِي قِيَامِ رَمَضَانِ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ يَعْمُرُهُمْ فِيهِ بِعَزِيمَةٍ فَيَقُولُ مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا كُفْرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّبَ مِنْ ذِنْبِهِ So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم during the holy month of Ramadan encouraged his Sahaba, encouraged his companions, encouraged his Ummah to uh, be vigilant in Qiyam al in praying and gaining the benefit of Ramadan. And this is in Muslim. And it's the same hadith like before, that whoever does this and expects the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that uh, Allah will forgive them of their sins. And there's a hadith the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ramadan, Bayna Ramadan, Gufira Ma Gufira Luhu Matakad Mindembi O Kama Kala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that between the Ramadans is a forgiveness, meaning you all the sins you got before Ramadan will be forgiven. But the scholars stipulate, most of the scholars say that if you uh, this is for the minor sins, not the major sins. For example, if you drink alcohol, smoke weed, zina, all these major sins, it won't forgive that. The only way to get the major sins forgiven is by toba, is by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way to get the major sins forgiven. So this is for the minor sins. This hadith, it shows us that this is something that the Prophet ﷺ encouraged and that it is not an obligation. You don't have to pray tarawih. It's not an obligation, but it is sunnah muakki. You know, it's it's uh, it's something the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged and did some of the his nights, but not all the nights did he pray in jama'ah. He stopped because he didn't want the people to uh, think that it was an obligation upon them. That if he kept doing, he was afraid that it would become watch it. So this was as a mercy for his ummah. So some of the benefits from this hadith is that there's a great reward for the one who prays uh, in the nights of Ramadan, expecting the reward of Allah and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his reward. Uh, also that uh, sunnah Ramadan or the qiyam uh, Ramadan is sunnah muakida. It is a sunnah that is uh, that was done, especially by the Sahaba and the Ummah, the righteous Ummah after them, they practiced this Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.